Hey everybody, I'm TJ Majors, spotter of the six cup car this weekend. I had the 41 truck and uh, I don't even... I don't even know how to kick the rest of this show. I think you were busy yesterday. Brett Griffin, spotter for Richard Childress Racing this year, and I am no longer friends with Freddie Kraft. Fuck. That's a lie. That's not nice. What's up? <laughs> Freddie Kraft, spotter for Bob Wallace and Ty Dillon this weekend. Full house. We've got the captain of the Titanic here and my good friend. Captain of the Titanic? Tyler Reddick is in the house as well. <laughs> Tyler, do you want to <laughs> that's, that's a great title. Uh yeah, how's it going? Um, yeah, I drive for uh, 2311. You Denny's, do? Denny's great. <laughs> yesterday? Yeah, great were you trying to? I mean, God, Tyler, yeah. half the day yesterday or just about? Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I had a great, I had a blast. <laughs> hey, your car went the same speed for 80 laps. It didn't matter what yeah. you were doing. No, I mean, the shame of it was, I think we actually had a good car. We just, we didn't really get to find out. I but, think the um, 71 with the same speed when he hit you. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, how? Can't believe you hit him, Tyler. Did you count to 10 before he hit you or? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, it was very slick out of the groove. So, yeah, yeah. no hard feelings there. I, I hate it for him. What's up, Casey? Hey, guys. Casey Boat here. And, um, I mean, I guess the, the captain of the Titanic also joined us today. So, <laughs> welcome, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he joined us today. What's up? Yeah. I, I thought, man, with everything that went on yesterday, I need to come on the show. Yeah. See what what the hell? I would, I'm just Thanks here to listen up, to Freddy. what the hell y'all have to say. We, yeah, <laughs> we, we know better. We were, we, yeah. we, we, I don't want to wait till uh, you know it pops up on my apparently Instagram down, feed. Apparently, the download needs a ratings boost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the other way around. Maybe. <laughs> we didn't. Uh, we didn't court. I so I we we might have stopped by Big Al's on the way home last night. Reddick's like, "What are you doing? Like, I'll do." I said, "You want to do DBC tomorrow?" He's like, "Yeah." So about midnight, I said, "Let's do DBC." I, I walk in. I go, "There's there's." six mics set up why is there six and i said dale pulled in i said Fucking tyler's truck looks just like dale's this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> and here he is so you guys both full signed, house. signed waivers right like we're not responsible for anything i think that i is. think dale could do whatever he wants yeah, yeah i don't know if so. probably doesn't need a waiver all right well there's plenty to talk about today but i would say denny hamlin might have had the most fun out of all of you drivers and spotters would you agree with his win yesterday uh yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, he's probably the happiest today. He's, <laughs> he's he's great and he's the happiest. How was the race, uh, Tyler? I'll start off with you. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mine, was, mine was. Yeah, uh, good. Ask him. It was a pretty smooth day. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. <laughs> where do I start? One spinning uh, on the front stretch. That's yes, where we started. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> at, least got, hey, at least you got the lead. Typic. Yeah. I let I let a lap. Yeah. <laughs> Typically at Bristol, you know, typical Bristol race, which it was not, you know, that, that sort of flip works out for the most part. Um, we, we definitely were all a little concerned going into the race, what it was going to turn into. And you had, I found you out had, really you quick. had tire problems in practice, correct? Yes, I did. So, I mean, naturally I was a little, little worried, but typically at Bristol, the wears get better as you go into the race and the, the wear doesn't, doesn't stay an issue. And uh, yesterday's race was, was not that it was a very different animal than, than I've ever seen at Bristol, uh, going back. I don't know how far, you know, in time at Bristol, it was felt very old school to me. It was actually a lot of fun. I know we were laps down, but, but as a driver, I've never been in the, the next gen car and, and thought, okay, I got to take care of my tires. I got to be thinking 30, 40 laps ahead. Right. Um, unfortunately a lot of cars would just start crashing when you would save your tires, but it was, uh, it was an interesting race. So not everyone was on the same, got a plan ahead here type plan. Then. It's, yeah. <clears throat> like you could see, you could see the guys. I'm sure TJ could see him spotting. Like there would be guys, like we, we just committed to, we're not going to the top. They stood out. Like you, you just can't go to the top and, and you gotta, you can't push for, it was 30 laps. You start to solve problems, start to see problems. And then 35 to 40 is when somebody, it was Kyle Bush most of the time, but yeah. somebody would blow a right rear. And but Kyle drove right to the front, too. Yeah, though. but that was the problem. Like, you could yeah. see it, like, somebody, like, you'd be on the bottom. It was like, you could laugh. Like, you'd be on the bottom just cruising around, and some, like, Harrison Burton was one, Austin Sandrick. Yeah. There was guys that would just drive by you on the, the, the Rick Ware cars. I thought they ran the race the most fun way, at least. Like, they drove to the front and then go, all right, we'll <clears> see where <throat> we fall to. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? But... Like, you could see the guys, like, you just watch them go by. All right, let them go. And you'll see them here in about 15 laps. They would come right back to you. You'd go back by them. But it was it was one of the craziest. And I think it was great. Like, yeah. for, as a, <clears throat> what we've been asking for is tire wear. And this oh, we was, got it. we got tire wear. <laughs> I mean, I think you'd probably want it to last maybe a little longer than 30 laps. But this is what we've been asking for, and we got it this week. But well, the, 
yeah. I, I wanted to say, like, um, don't you think, though, say, you know, everybody's thinking, ma'am, this is too far. It's, it's better. Back it up a little bit. Maybe we don't need to be this aggressive. But if you let the teams go home and turn around and come back a week later to run that same race, wouldn't they be able to make enough <clears throat> adjustment to get that tire to 80 laps to 100 laps? Rick Ware, you talked about them. They're up there running toward the front. And they still really didn't have some of the problems that the other teams did because they're probably nowhere near as aggressive on cambers and all the other things. Mm -hmm. And so if the teams – so if Goodyear said, look, we're not budging, right, we're going to sit right here on this tire, we don't know what it will do next time you come back. Yeah. So prepare. Um, the teams could dial some of that aggression out of the cars that would make, make those tires work and last a little longer. So I, I text a prominent crew chief in our sport, somebody that's very well respected, and he – I said, I said, if you went back tomorrow with knowing exactly what you know now, ch you could change the car, could you make it last more than 50 laps? And he said, not really. I don't think. You know, and I think it was just a, 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 a rubber <clears throat> issue. You know, like, obviously, they switched from PJ1 to resin, and it didn't take rubber. Like, you could see the racetrack did not take rubber. And it, that, was, that was the issue. That's why the tires were, were wearing as they did. And he just said, I don't think. He said, I don't think we could change. It wasn't a setup problem. He said, I don't think we could make it last. I'm sure he could. You know what I mean? Like, if there's some way you could probably do it. But it, well, when, you, <laughs> when you see, uh, you know, the Gibbs cars all being able to be more aggressive and then take another organization that all were having issues across the board, like maybe like Penske, right? Penske yeah. couldn't really push hard at all. The 12, the two, all those guys were struggling. So, you know, you see these sort of organizational, you know, imbalances at racetracks where teams perform really good and some struggle. And we saw the same thing. So to me, that is settings. That is, that is an approach and ideology that that team or that organization had coming into the weekend. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the 11 and the 19 – were unbelievable. I, I don't. Like we were. We were at that one. That long run when let the when everybody pit under green. Yeah. Like we were. The whole field is f***ing struggling. Like they're oh. out there on ice trying to wreck, and the eleven and nineteen are still dicing through traffic like there's nothing wrong. Yeah. We were. Well, that was seventy laps on their tires as well, and the crew chief th that you said his car actually went near that. Went about sixty at the end. And it gave up. He said they they pit they they ran he they ran seventy four laps. He said it gave up with about ten to go. Yeah, but I mean, still, I, Denny's Denny had the best car, oh, and they're where they did wear some right rears early, which I think was easier to manage for Denny in the long run because you you can control it with a throttle more than a right front when you go into the corner. But uh, yeah, the nineteen and and eleven were just good. They were really good setup wise, and I do think if we go back there, I think. I think teams are going to run probably 80 to 70 to 100 laps, probably. Majority of the field will be able to do that more competitively. And the guys figured it out during the race, too. Like, you can oh, see, yeah. like, they, 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 like, we went, the first run was like 30 laps, we're blowing tires. Then they realized, okay, we can't go up top as much as we want to. We're going to, we have to run the bottom. And then you could see guys like, you, if you could jump a guy up top, you would go up there. But even then, like, I swear to God, two laps up top murdered your tires whatever it was like you can see yeah. a guy go out of line and tyler can back this quick. up like yeah. you go up to uh, pass a guy for two corners and it would uh, drastically affect your tires if you can get a green flag cycle the tires would last longer because when you run into yellow it does pick up the stuff that's put down that you don't really see so if you get the green flag cycle guys can go longer on tires as well so that was those early yellows just hurt we've been jumping up and down on here for six years tj and i have and freddie for the last four so you don't jump off throttle time is a good thing <laughs> It's a good thing. Chase Elliott said it this weekend in a press conference regarding horsepower. So as a spotter, when they're ripping around, running wide open, we're not working that hard. When you change it up and they're off throttle and some guys are 80%, some guys are 100%, some guys are 50%, it makes us work harder. How much more fun is it as drivers to do yesterday versus – well, you sucked yesterday. That's why I you're still had fun. Me. I mean, I was five laps down, but I didn't care. I was racing yeah, everyone time. from 20th on back like I was a lead lap car. I was having a blast, knocking them out of the way, everything. I was, uh, I was hoping at some point, right, like maybe I'd somehow get back to front. It was, didn't happen. Was, but, you're just trying to cause dude, a big uh, wreck. At the end of the race when Martin and Denny are, race, are racing for the lead, I was like – I got stuck behind two cars that were like right rears recorded and Denny's trying to knock me out of the way. And I'm like blocking him, <laughs> blocking Martin, trying to stay ahead of him. But, uh, you blocked the ball. You know, I blocked the leaders. So did you, he not, shot you not, up not, out of the not way. The leader. I'm talking about the B. Didn't he shoot we you up out of the way? No, we wrecked, we wrecked oh. get out of his way. <laughs> okay. Why, why, down there? why did Bubba cuss you out yesterday? Yeah. Uh, he was tired of me talking. Cause we, we, we were, we were holding on to a, uh, I don't know. If, I thought a tire went down, but I think he just got in the, the marbles and, 
I was like, I could pit if you need to, but we got to go. There's still like 10 laps to go in the first stage. I said, don't pit if you don't have to. Like, stay out because if you you're only going to lose a lap like if you just maintain i said don't but like i'm like running through all the scenarios and he's like please just shut the fuck up i was like copy that <laughs> shutting the fuck up <laughs> i mean during that yeah. cycle though guys did it I'm, I'm from my point of view it was one of the most chaotic things like going back to like when we're racing at the rain in coda and, and maybe a couple other instances instances i mean it was just absolute chaos there was cars going out there that were like three or four seconds off the pace you're having i mean people's tires were like they would they would cord and then they'd wear through the first layer of cords and then they'd about wreck and you're trying to dodge them it was it was absolute chaos it was, it was a lot of fun it was uh, we were spotting like almost a third of the lap a third of the lap in front of you instead of just like right in front of you you're like you're looking way up here because you're gonna catch that guy like that yes. it looked like a super when, when, fast arca on race on that green flag cycle it looked like a uh, video game. <laughs> it, it, was, it, it, it was ridiculous. It, <laughs> did you guys see all the dust? It almost looked like, did it almost look dusty? Yeah. There was like top. cords oh, yeah. flying, like there <clears throat> yeah. was tire cords bouncing off somebody my windshield. Sent, somebody sent the me a, a, a picture. They were sitting much, like close to the front row and like whatever, there's like a platform below their seat and it has just tire cords laying on it, like <laughs> blowing over the fence, I guess. Dale Jr. was in the race in Indianapolis where tires were a problem. I spotted the race in Indianapolis where tires were a problem. The biggest difference, Dale Jr., in the race yesterday versus that one is when we were in Indy, they threw cautions to prevent wrecks. Yesterday, they let it go. Yeah. I remember that race at Indy, and, and when you had a tire issue, basically you'd go down into one corner, realize that you were at the cords, and then the next corner the tire blew out and ripped the whole left side or, or right rear, right, left rear out of, the, out of the car. So, I mean, there wasn't like a – you know, at Bristol uh, – as Tyler said, you know, guys would go through the cords and you could make a lap or two or a handful of laps. I know, I think Josh yeah. Berry ran 10 laps on the cords at the end of that race. A lot of guys did just putting around, just trying to get to the finish. But at Indy, you'd run 10 laps. Somebody was going to get into the cords and blow the tire the next corner. And it was like, bam, bam, you know, mm -hmm. and we did lead them. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was pretty frustrating. Um, and then, so NASCAR starts throwing the yellows every 10 laps. Um, and so that was my only fear yesterday because you could see everyone, you could sense everybody panicking in that first 100, 200 laps. Everybody on social media, fans, the, the media, Goodyear. Goodyear's hell. <laughs> they had a press conference, a press conference mid race. Like, <laughs> we're sorry. We're sorry. Yeah. You know, don't hate us. And I'm like, this is unnecessary, man. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the difference, though, is, I mean, it seemed a couple of drivers blew tires. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I did a great job of cording tires all day long, <laughs> and even in practice. And, I mean, it was very obvious when you cord it. It was, I mean, immediate. But, I mean, you, I feel like myself and a couple other drivers pushed it like 15 laps on corded tires. Like, they didn't Just blow. most of the time explode. So, yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's a good thing. I, I, I think back to my uh, next-gen test at Darlington. I'd run like 20 laps and then out of nowhere it just become undrivable and it was because the right rear tire was corded. And I did that probably 15 times at that, at that test and I never once wrecked because I blew a tire. I just, I wrecked at the end of that test because I pushed it too much on that corded right rear tire. So I guess that's the only, I, that is a positive, right? Like I feel like for the most part we can run this thing to the cords and it's very obvious it's on the cords and then it's ultimately up to the driver and the team if they want to pit or not. Now Dale, on your point with NASCAR throwing cautions to avoid wrecks, should they have been more cautious and maybe thrown a few more cautions during this one? Well, that's a tough situation they're in because they're out of tires. They didn't have enough tires to finish the race, so they didn't want to throw yellows because they knew people were going to come down pit road and put on tires, and then they definitely were going to run out of tires. So yeah. it was a tough situation. <clears throat> they didn't want it to turn into a show, but they also knew they couldn't throw a ton of yellows. Um, guys were just going to run through the tires in the pits. Um, I was – me and you, had, you You said – you responded to my tweet. I was, I was watching the race about it, 200 laps in. I'm like, man, the, if you're a pit – this is what's frustrating about these races. There, were, there are some things that's frustrating about it. If you're on the pit box, you know NASCAR is going to alter their – you know, NASCAR, whether they want to believe it or not, they, they call yellows differently in certain races oh, for different for reasons, sure. right? For different reasons, right? Sometimes, they're, they're, sometimes they do it for, for caution, you know, out of caution, right? And so I'm sitting on, if I'm a crew chief on the pit box and this starts happening, I'm like, hmm, how do they call cautions today? 
because of this, right? And I, 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 I thought that they would be quicker to throw a yellow, like a car gets into a wall, car gets sideways, yellow! Because we don't want to have cars blowing tires and, and we don't want to have this that happened at Indy happen here. Um, and so I thought that they would be, you know, a little... And to your point, they were. They, they were. they were yeah. for a while. And then yeah. they realized... Was, and then they... Re- we can't do it this way. Well, not, right? not, not so much that, but for one, they, they gave everybody a set, extra set of tires, but they did not have any more tires on hand to give more than one set. Yeah. So you saw them start to burn laps under caution. We would we would run extra oh, laps yeah. under caution. Fans were picking up on that really yeah. on social media. They're like, <laughs> this is that. boss. <laughs> but I went, said it. I went they said it twice on the broadcast. Or... Yeah, they admitted <laughs> they, they, like, they, they, they are running they, they would, We yeah. would run. They would, oh, I'll put, hold the yeah. one to go. We're going to run two more yeah. laps. Oh, I got to sweep the top. And I was like, I yeah, we got to bottom. They, they were blowing the <laughs> apron off. Like, yeah. They're like, all right, yeah. put the, we need a blower <laughs> on the white line to blow the apron off. I was like, what, so when do we clean the apron? Yeah, like, I didn't uh, watch the truck race the night before. <laughs> Freddie, I, but, I, I well, peed twice Zane, under caution. It was great. <laughs> you probably had plenty of time. <laughs> they saw Zane get down in there and that stuff and, and run me over. So, like, we don't want that to happen again. So, we're going to blow that off every and time. And, Freddie, you, you expressed your frustration. I think Carson Hosevar, you know. Hosevar. So, that was my biggest, my only problem with the entire race. And I know, like, TJ, I told, I asked TJ to go back and check this. And let me just say one thing right here. TJ and Freddie are getting ready to argue. No, I don't think we're not. This is going to be the best part of the show. We're not really going to argue. He knows I'm right and he's wrong. (laughs) That's pretty Uh, much it. Yeah, okay. I'm just glad you finally have an opinion on something. Because Dale said you used to be mouthy and now you just shut the fuck up every time you come on here. But, uh... (laughs) I've already been... That's because I've already been to the holler once because of you idiots. <laughs> but host of ours has a prior issue, obviously. We're, we're in the middle of that green flag cycle with the end of the race. He has probably, a lot of issues. There's probably about 50 to go, maybe, and everybody's kind of trying to stretch it. There's no yellow. And some guys start pitting under yellow. Rodney was the first one to come down pit road, or Josh was the first one to come down pit road. And there's some guys that everybody's starting to pit. And host of our has a problem. And he wants a caution, which everybody wants a caution. TJ, how fast was he going? Which time? When he's well, when he was when, at his most dangerous point of this, the the <laughs> the most um, egregious attempt at getting a yellow, he hits the wall and then stops and goes about 35, 36 miles an hour. So for a less few than pit road speed. He's on the racetrack running less well, than pit road speed. No, because pit road speed is thirty five. You just well, said he run thirty five miles an hour. Did well, you I not never, just say the that? Same, same as pit road. <laughs> he can't go over thirty five. <laughs> he was above thirty five. But so. he, so he is out there. He hits the wall off of two. Which the one I first saw, TJ said he spent a lap trying to draw a caution. Which that is not right. You should not try to manipulate the race by drawing a caution. But do you think he was? That, that, uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's according to the legend, TJ. Yes, yeah. he tried to draw Brett, a caution. You saw it. Was he trying to draw a caution? He wasn't. He didn't watch the. Race. Hey, I showed him right here. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. There's so he's clearly, but it doesn't matter. It should not matter. He is out there running 35 miles an hour, and we're splitting him on both sides down the front stretch. He can't turn because he's got flat tires. He goes in the corner, washes up the hill. Uh, he can turn. Well, he couldn't when he got to turn one. He could turn. When he got to turn one, he could not. He, when he tried to turn, he went up the hill. He could I would turn. imagine because he came to pit road. He had to stop and come to pit road. He didn't road. want to turn. He was trying to cause a wreck. But, okay, should it have been a caution? Uh, no. So, no way. No, no you, you know, because you had pit road. No, already? because you, yeah, well, you, <laughs> did, you pitted three laps later, so of course you think you did. I blew a, a tire. But it, it, well, that's has, that that has sounds like your do, problem, not that mine. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about here. The son of is out there running 30 miles an hour on a track that guys are there running were all the ass. There were cautions for less than that. If somebody runs in the that. back of him, he's going to get hurt. Or somebody's going to get hurt. Don't hit the back of him. <laughs> there were you're cautions been, for... You've been driving down a highway and so you're behind somebody and they move out of the way and there's something laying in the road. Oh, yeah. Can, can you see... Tyler, can you see... If you're following somebody down the front straightaway... He's little. Can you see in front of that guy? <laughs> yeah. Nick, Nick's calling it for me. Yeah. You, yeah, but... <laughs> see? I'm just saying... We're good. What's, like, your, you, what's your argument? It should have been a... F- Yellow. Oh no, I don't agree with that. You're <laughs> crazy. Oh, you're, oh, you're no. one. Now oh. both of you are crazy. No. I don't. I I feel like that. Um, so Hosevar has the issue. He can slow the car down. He can get left. He can get on the apron. He can get to pit road. And I think he didn't. You know, whether he was doing anything intentional or not, I don't know. But I think that he can get his car off the racetrack so the race can continue, and he should. Oh, for sure. Right. And so I'm not going to throw a yellow because he can't or won't do that. So when somebody piles in the back of him, we're going to be okay with his it. His problem. His, okay, but that, Sounds, it's, not, it's not Tyler's problem when Tyler blows into him because he didn't know he was doing it. No, Freddie, we all did our jobs Tyler, very well. Tyler, you guys can are go to host, Tyler can go to host We bar. threw a 
yellow lap 20 because vinyl <laughs> fell off the 24 car but we're That's not true. gonna throw we're not gonna throw a they caution because the guy's out there running 30 miles an hour this is fun they should be, I think it should just, should be a, a yellow bad, for either one it's not the bad president right <laughs> it like shouldn't if, be a yellow if you throw a caution in the middle of the cycle yeah. plus plus to your point so uh, what i thought you was about to say is you're in, you're enabling everybody to do this yeah right? then it's just going to become a thing yeah I, it, it's the the caution was, flag is a caution it flag. It is not a f-ing entertainment flag. It should not have anything. That, there's a car out there running no, but thirty miles an hour. If, if, I get, I get, I get. It. He's trying to draw a caution, but at the same time, it's unsafe. You're wasting is, your time, buddy. You care. already you're, lost. You, <laughs> you, your your argument is good, but you need to be telling Carson this. Oh, I get it. But the he fact will. that the, he put not Carson did it to himself, right? He's he's out there putting himself at risk. Yes, but he also put 35 other guys at risk. And if somebody runs into him as fast as they're going when he's running 30 miles an hour, that's not fucking safe. So the caution flag is a safety flag, no? Freddie, are you more saying that NASCAR should have gotten on the radio at that point and been like, Carson, I don't even know. I don't remember doing- what they said, but the, the, we preach safety in this sport. We're all about f- safety there is a car on the racetrack running 35 miles an hour when the rest of us are running well god knows what speed and it's not safe this caution flag should have been out it, it, it's close to being a legit caution but i don't know i just I, I think the race plays out right there that's just it's a flow of the race at my point like right there i understand what the, you're saying the, the problem is uh, there were and several we, uh, there were a lot of cars in the last 10 laps of that race running sort of similar to that same but not, speed. But not that bad. I know, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, there was... There was well, there was that, that whole run, and li- listen, this has nothing to do with the fact... I thought we should have pitted 20 laps before we did. So, that well, really doesn't sh- have anything to do with the... because you shut the, the f- up. That's <laughs> what- <laughs> it has nothing to do with the fact that, uh, that we were still out there. It's just, like, we've seen this, and I guess we asked for consistency. They're being consistent. They're not going to... F- throw a yellow during a pit cycle that's consistency because we've seen it at atlanta we've seen it multiple times they're just not going to do it so now you have to call the race based on the fact that you might as well pit early because they're not throwing a f-ing yellow during a pit cycle it's not going to happen yeah i don't i also think they saw what he was trying to do and knew i get were, it, I, it yeah, I know what you're saying it shouldn't but matter <clears throat> there were you're, less things that happened you're, you're earlier putting everybody caution. at the racetrack at risk so when he's it, out there uh, two things one if you don't throw the caution as soon as he hits the wall and slows way down, I'm, I'm on Dell Jr.'s team. You of can't course throw you the are. caution. You guys signs our checks. I know. <laughs> and then they need to be bigger. Yeah. Uh, but, but if you're going to throw the caution, i.e. Haley Deegan the week before for no reason, like he's hit the wall, he's very slow. But that, Once you don't throw it there, then it is the driver and spotter's job to basically avoid the problem. And I think everybody safely you know, did that. Um I don't know. That's kind of where I stand on the whole, do you throw it or not throw it? Yeah. But if you do throw it, after you let him ride around there for 15 seconds, which I think is how he long you said he had 14 seconds to get down at one point. Okay, so if you do throw it after the fact, you have to penalize him five laps. Something. Because you have to set the precedent of we're not going to let drivers manipulate yeah. cautions. I thought it was when Denny parked on the racetrack at Richmond, Richmond years ago. It was like two laps or something. Like yeah, that. they gave two him like laps. a two-lap penalty, yeah. The other thing, too, is, uh, and I know we're getting in the weeds here, but you mentioned the, the Haley Deegan deal. I don't know about you guys, but I quit comparing the 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 booth, the choices in the competition booth, I, you know, between Xfinity Cup and, and Truck. I don't know. I no longer, like, compare the two because there's two different, different teams race, up right, there, yeah. different race directors, different – different opinions they all have a different opinion on what a caution is and what when when should i throw a yellow right and so you know the the trucks are going to truck and the, the xfinity guys are going to xfinity and, and the cup are going to do what they do and so what happened on saturday with with haley is a xfinity deal right and and so i don't i don't really let the i don't let that affect how i, I look at the cup races but i mean i think the cup guys do it the best i really do that cup booth they do a great job uh, the the truck and the Xfinity is a is an opportunity for guys that are going to be doing it in the future to grow and move up. They're going to make mistakes. I'm I'm okay if the trucks don't go exactly like I think it should, or Xfinity throws that yellow for Haley like they did. I'm I'm okay with that because that's that's where they're learning that, you know that balance. Um, and and I was happy that they held off on that yellow for Carson. He's a rookie. He needs to know that this is not you know Pensacola. Uh, or the short tracks that he that he that he grew up racing on, and, and or the truck series, right, where they might have thrown that yellow really quickly, right? They would have given that yellow every time 
in the truck series. What'd you call it, Brett? What was it, the truck series when he was in it? I don't know what I call it. You said you called it the car. This isn't the Cars and Hosts of our car, truck series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he ran a series for a year. But I, I, you're right. It is. There's a danger factor, and I think it gets close to that. I think it gets close to the. I'm sure they were looking at it, getting ready to mash that button. But um, I don't think they were because they're not going to throw a caution during a pit cycle. That's like, the I other knew thing. It. I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. I was like, they're not going to throw it. Like they're yeah. not going to. I mean, I, it's not. It should be, but they're not yeah. going to throw a caution. And so, that, and that should. And in my opinion, and I don't know how you guys feel. That should not weigh in on the fact of a caution flag or not. I like agree. The, 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 whether the pit cycle's happening, yes. happening or yeah, not? It's, it's, it's it either should. a caution or yeah. it's not a caution. It's, the pit cycle but should But it's not. always been that way. Because, I know. Because if they hit that, that button that in the middle. That is not true. Like, in this, in the, like when I was going to races, the f***ing caution came out in the pit cycle a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like when I was a kid watching oh, yeah. races. It, it's like they don't want to have to do the math and figure out where everybody goes and take that 20 minutes away from – racing when we when when 30 years ago we had less technology and did it the scores did it, and, what's yeah. on your car the, the, the wives were up there figuring it <laughs> yeah. out can you imagine that good luck oh my god uh, yeah. sign me up no i don't think you want to be a part of that yeah. but but on that note you they, saw carson wreck right like as from a team standpoint What's your strategy? Did you, just, Tyler, did I you mean, go blown, blown, blown by Carson at some point? I think point? you went around the outside of him. I yeah, saw you go so, by. Uh, this was before I think he even <laughs> slowed down more, but but he like went into turn one. It, it, it didn't look like he got loose, but all of a sudden his car just jerked right, and he clipped Blaney and about wrecked him. So the next car, I'm like, oh, boy, I'm worried the same thing's going to happen. So he drives down to the bottom. I don't see the back of his car get loose or anything like that, but all of a sudden, boom, I get hit in the left rear, and I'm already on a quarter right rear, and it about wrecked me. So I was like – what is going on, right? Like, it seemed a little odd, but, yeah, I mean, we kind of went into that green flag cycle knowing at some point, right, like someone like Kyle or, or someone's going to blow or lose the right rear tire, right, and it was going to catch them off guard. They're going to spin out, bring the caution out. But, um, yeah, that just that just didn't happen. Did that hold, like, at least for you, I think you waited, what, three laps to pit? Did we didn't that... wait. We, when the tire blew out. I swear. We we, pit. <laughs> I was out there for, like, 16, I, 17 laps. Yeah, I wanted putting. to pit about 20 laps before we did, so I was like, I think I was jealous of Rodney, and then they came down pit road, and they were look. They had the most fun ever because Gosh, they were. Dang. They Knife were through there. I mean, Josh was <laughs> yeah. flying. Goodyear <laughs> should not change a thing leading into I hear the, the driver, Bristol Fall Race. <laughs> Tyler, I mean, I, I, I wish Bristol I had Fall some. Race. I wish I w- at least had a you know a couple conversations with Billy and Booty about this, but I, I feel like the box that we operate within with the next gen car is very tight when it comes to toe and and camber and just all the settings so i would i would love to say spot on we could keep it the same but knowing those tight windows we have to be within it 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 may not be enough i mean we were already going out there with the mindset during our our you know uh, after a restart whatever it might be and i feel like a lot of the field was like all right i gotta take care of my stuff and we went from maybe getting 30 laps to 55, 60, and I feel like that's, I mean, that does seem short, but if we all know that and we have enough tires for it, right, we're all going to, I mean, we're going to split every, you know, the first stage and the second stage probably in half. So, I mean, it, it, would, it would be a much different race than we've seen, but we know that we can go plenty of laps past the limit of the tire when we're in the cord. So I think it would just, it would just look a lot different, but I think we could take it back and everyone's going to approach it differently now that we know that okay they're not going to throw the yellow for a lot of things in, in a cycle and we probably just split stages up more Dale. well i mean there's a lot of things i think you could do uh they should probably go back and test they could probably add a little more rubber to this particular tire just more tread um but if they went back to test with this tire and found a combination that was slightly better you'd be tempted if you're good year to use that that tire right to 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 make a change <clears throat> you can't uh you can't risk going back and having the exact same situation and to tyler's point i think we'd want these tires to not really have these kind of issues until we get to around 80 or 100 laps and if we're riding a second and a second and a half off the pace and only getting 50 laps out of the tires that we got to do better than that um, so there's a lot of different things that i think they could do they're going to probably test they're going to have to try to figure out whether you know, it's the the resin had anything to do with it versus the PJ1. Do they go back and use the PJ1? Was that aiding the tire, the PJ1, when it would activate and add grip? Was that relieving the right side tire by giving that left side tire more grip? Was that 
you know, in helping improve the tire's ability to put rubber down. Why did the tire not rubber the track in? Uh, to Tyler's point about the you know the variables that they can change on the car, albeit minimal. Do we do we give these teams two three hours of practice the next Bristol weekend so they can try to improve tire wear, try to make the adjustments to the cambers and so forth to try to make some gains there. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity. The one thing that I think. Drivers have been asking for this. Drivers have been asking for a tire like this. Goodyear has been asked to be more aggressive. They got aggressive. We ought to applaud that. Uh, the drivers know that this is probably a little more aggressive than, than we need to be. Let's work with Goodyear to make those small adjustments so we don't overcorrect. That's my fear. Every time we ever do anything like this and get something sort of close to what we want, this is the best short track race I've seen in a long time with the next gen, if not the best. Uh, let's not overcorrect. Let's not let's not be hard on Goodyear and, and force them to go back into conservative mode and bring back a tire that's going to run 500 laps, right? Yeah. <clears throat> my, my only issue with it yesterday was, I mean, I know that to your point, it was the best race. I guarantee on TV it was amazing. It was not a lot of fun to spot because it was. I want to say uh, it was a great race. I don't know what it was like to be there in person. It was a great race on TV because of Harvick and Clint. They did an amazing job. Well, probably Harvick. Well, they did. A, I know they did. <laughs> they they jumped right on top of what was happening and told us what the drivers were doing and what they were dealing with. So, without that, it looked like it would have looked like confusion and 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 would have not have been enjoyable to watch. But they helped us understand yeah. like why things were happening the way they were. The, the only issue I had with it yesterday was like it did not pay. Like you, we we've, we've all run tire management races. You're doing it right now with the late models a lot. Tire management almost didn't help yesterday because, like, we we were we could we were, Bubba was like, I'm not leaving the bottom, and I'll, I'll it'll pay off in the long run. But the problem was you never really got to the long run because of you know you get 35, 40 laps, somebody would blow a tire, spin out, and so it's like you're managing your stuff, and then it was it was like Russian roulette. Like the the Rick Ware cars were a good example of it. Uh, a couple of guys they would they would drive their whole ass in the front part of the run and just get to the front and then go. All right, we'll just see how far back we go, you know. And hey, but <clears throat> so there was, there was not like, and normally, like you would run late model races or whatever it is, you, you, you run whatever, 50%, 70%, and then that pays off in the long run because, you know, you're, you've got tire left at the end. It didn't matter if you had tire left because, you know, somebody's going to spin out and kind of and ruin it. But I, I thought it was, it was really fun to watch. It wasn't fun to spot by any means. It was fun early. I said we're we're back in Atlanta because they're two by two running two seconds off, and we're we're having a hell of yeah. a day here. But uh, it was it was I, I it was way better to your point. It was the best most fun I've had short. Tra- it brought me back to old school short track racing. Yeah, I'm spot on. I think they spot I think on. The, I think the teams will figure it out. I think we'll go back there and the teams will they'll figure it out and everyone. These guys aren't dumb. They know what they're doing. We saw it during the race. We like we the it first per, the first runs we go thirty laps. Then it was forty five laps. Then it was a little bit like six guys ran sixty laps. Yeah, you, know, you saw it during the race. You figured out, not not so much the setup wise, but the drivers figured out what they had to do to make it last longer. Yeah. You know, like don't go to the top. Take care I actually, of your stuff. Uh, I actually enjoyed it because there was a lot of like the driver wanted to go faster and you had to pull him back sometimes and. I, I mean, I felt like I spotted a plate race yesterday because I'd look at that lap time. would be like 80, 90, 80, 65. Hey, slow down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I thought it was a lot of fun to actually have to manage a tire for once. I can't even remember the last time that we've had to do that. It was probably – I don't even know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know either. It's been that long. Almost almost 20 years. It's probably. been al- probably almost 20 years. I think that's what I told somebody last night. That it's been almost 20 years Man, since we, we've had we'd to do We'd fire that. off at Atlanta and you ran 75, 80% for 8, 10 exactly. laps because you knew at the end of the run you were going to have something for everybody. And we loved it. I, I guess my biggest thing here is if this tire had laid down rubber, would that fix the problem? Yeah. Yes. Well, it, it seemed like during... Sorry. It no, no, no. Like no, during no, the I, I, I'm, I'm cycle, yeah. it, it wasn't like super obvious, but it, it just seemed like the tire lasted longer the second time like uh, that second when, when everyone pitted and i came back out like i pretty much pushed the entire last bit and my tires never went away it seemed like everyone was being much more aggressive when they came back out and it visually it's not much but it, it did seem like just that little bit was was a step in helping it so for whatever reason because the team's belief was okay practice was bad we have a problem but we're not all out there at the same time once we get out there at the same time we'll turn this track black 
we'll be fine. And, and I don't know when this started, eight, nine, ten years ago, but I remember Dover, Martinsville, Bristol. We would watch the track turn colors. They throw the caution, and then all of a sudden it's all cleaned off. Yep, yep. But for whatever reason, yesterday, I, I, I would just say to your point, Dale, I feel like they have to go test. Um, but if you go test and figure out how to make this tire lay down rubber, will that fix it? And if it does, man, that'd be awesome. Well, the, the tricky thing with the testing is, you know, we, we would go to Martinsville. <clears throat> you, go to, you go to a lot of these tracks, and because you go out there and run 30, 40 laps, whatever, a group of three or four cars, you'll, yeah. you'll come straight off the track and put new tires on and go straight back out. And, and a lot of times what happens is you're not out there putting around Picking up, picking it up, picking the rubber back up. So yeah. you get this false illusion, uh, you know, this illusion that, okay, it's going to lay rubber. And then we get there and then all of a sudden all that rubber that it was laying down is, is not anymore because we're out there pacing around, picking it all up. My favorite part of this whole weekend though, is there's all these super smart people involved on the team side, on the NASCAR side, on the Goodyear side. And none of them knew this was going to happen. And that chaos is what made it great. <laughs> like, well, well I think th we're just so blinded by the trends that we've always had there. It's like, okay, well, you know, we're going to get in the race, and it's going to go back the way it always is. Yeah, so I mean, the, we, the funny the, thing was, yeah. Our, our whole group was like, yep, top's going to come in. It's going to turn back into an old, old Tyler, school Tyler quarter tires in practice. What'd you run, like 30-something laps? 30 laps. Yeah, 30 laps. And, and I was like, is that a concern? And they're like, ah, we don't think so. We think it's going to rubber up. It'll be fine. Yeah. And then the first caution, they're like, all right, it's 20 laps. We're, we're, eh, there's, there's still pretty good wear here. And then I think the next was like thir yeah. like a 35-lap run. I think the eight blew a tire, and they're like, okay, we're all like, – this is a shit show. Like, we're, we're getting ready to be in trouble here. Yeah, Brad said early, he's like, track's not taking any rubber. Like, yeah. he mentioned that early, and we kept – you know, Looking everyone had problems. Looking to tracks somewhat similar, such as a Richmond or Martinsville coming up, can we see – Bring the same tire. I would definitely – I would not be as nervous about taking this tire to Richmond. Yeah, for sure. I think, you no, know, that's a that, – the asphalt, you know – Wears the tire differently than, than concrete. Concrete, that brushed concrete, is a bit of a grater. You know, a bit of a cheese grater tire wear at Dover and Bristol. Is this your pitch to get asphalt back at Bristol? Or? Never going to happen. <laughs> I'm never going to stop talking about it. I never. Know why you I hate concrete. I want to know why you hate concrete. Why, why, Concrete's sure? for sidewalks, man. Are, uh, <laughs> why did they go to concrete at Bristol? Because the asphalt was tearing up. Yeah. I rem it was like, uh, I think those races are on YouTube, but the the – there was a particular weekend where uh, they had just recently repaved the racetrack and it was tearing, up, tearing apart, awful. And, um, and they said, we're, we're just going to put concrete down. They've never had a problem since. Um, you know, is today's asphalt technology better? Sure. Would it probably last? I don't know. Um, we're about to find out with North Wilsboro, right, when we go run that all-star race. <laughs> Holy f***ing fast. At Two North seconds Wilsboro. faster. <laughs> Two and a half seconds. Wow. Two and a half in the truck. Isn't Bring that tire to North, North Wilsboro. <laughs> Did you do the test? No, no. I think oh. Ty did, yeah. yeah. On a track that little, two seconds fast. Yeah, two seconds. Wow. And they're driving up the racetrack in the middle of one and two because they're you know, going down that hill so much quicker. It's uh, going to be wild. It's going to be neat. But, um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, I would take that tire to, to Richmond, no problem. I would be a little nervous about I – I mean, Martinsville is probably fine. You know, you're just going to burn the rears off, and which is probably a good thing. Yeah, that's what but, we want, right? You know – I think, um, Tyler, the, uh, the tire they had at Martinsville at the end of last year was probably the best tire that I've seen at that track in a long time because it did rubber the track in. Remember the rubber stacking up on the turns yeah. and well, stuff? Well, the tricky part with it was it would lay a bunch of rubber down, and you would have somewhere that would go with it. But as soon as the track really, really rubbered in, now all of a sudden you're running rubber on rubber, and your tires would stop wearing. So that, I think that was kind of a – unforeseen circumstance that came with that so yeah that's the tricky part you want you want the track to lay rubber so you have you know your soft aggressive tire you know rubbers in the racetrack but then you've also got to somehow keep the tire wearing in that rubbed up racetrack i think that's what that's what happened in that race uh last fall once it rubbered in the wear kind of went away with it yeah so um but i i thought they made some gains whatever they were doing at martinsville and the, the approach that they used there this past year that they probably could continue down that same path at, at that, and maybe it's the same shit they're doing at, at you know at Bristol and so forth. But I like it, man. I think I love Goodyear's even trying to do something different. They you know forever it felt like they were basically like, hey, we're going to build a tire that we know is not going to fail. I don't care what you say or what your comments or what your thoughts about how it drives. It's going to freaking get us through the weekend, no questions. Yeah, you know. And so now at least we're 
they're trying to, you know, forever, man, they were not willing to come off of that, you know, really, really conservative approach. But the tire connects the car to the ground. It is the most important thing that's going to affect what the race looks like and, and the raceability and drivability of the cars. It is the most critical component. It's, you know, we talk about the next gen car and aero and all of those things. The tire is the number one part of that puzzle. And so finally for Goodyear to have, you know, to be able to, you know, open the book a little bit and make some changes and try to help the product is a great thing. The, the we, we've preached about it on here. You've preached about it on DJD that we, we need, the tire is going to affect the race better, great, more greater than anything else. And we saw that yesterday. Like nobody's talking about the package. Nobody's talking about this car. It, the tire Arrow. is the air. And there's no, there's it, the tire is yeah. the like, that's what, that's what drove the race. What, what made the race great yesterday was the fact that the tire was different. It was, it was the drivers and the tires. They talked about passes. They're also, uh, that's the most I've ever seen a car running in the back of another car in the middle of the car. Oh my gosh. So many <laughs> times. So much of that. <laughs> going on i was like yes yeah tyler knows taking me oh, yeah. back dale's dale's adopted son josh run f- tyler he did. Over. Yeah, he <laughs> did. i mean this Worked was out. this was this race had the most lead changes in a short track race ever which was 54 so i mean that shows like, i just remember practice. leaving martinsville to dale's point and lee my uh, engineer at the time at stuart haas racing said this left side tire could legitimately run 3,000 yes. miles, yeah. three th- that's to California and back. And then I got a phone call this past week from a former driver, a uh, buddy of ours, and he said, Goodyear is bringing the softest tires to the racetrack they've ever brought. And then we were talking about, but like at after, you know, 40 laps, the fall off stops. Like you lose a second and a half, but you stop at halfway through the run. You don't keep going. Well, holy cow, hold my beer. Yeah. This weekend fixed 3, all that. 3,000 miles. You know how far we can go on a set of tires this week? 15 miles. <laughs> it's 30 laps. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, on a similar note, spot on, spot off, experience was a big factor in a race centered around tire wear. Dale. Yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, experience was important, uh, but your car played a big role. I mean, uh, you know, th- some of the guys that were more aggressive on cameras and so forth, no matter how smart they were, how talented they were, there's not much that you can do with that. If your car just will not, you know, get to lap 45 or get to lap 50, uh, there's nothing you can do about that. So, I mean, some, some guys out there were in a bad situation and there was no way out. Other, other you know, teams and drivers like the Gibbs cars, you could see that their cars were assisting in that whole process, right? And so I think it's a good balance between experience and um, and the car itself and the setup of the car. I, I thought it was I thought it was very telling. Denny, Denny, I thought Denny was the best car. Like drop of the green, he drove to the front. Like I thought he was the best car. And then we ha- started having the tire issues, and he kind of maintained. But he would he was able to. Well, he wrecked. Yeah, he yeah for he, sure. He, he was he, one he of the cut, he cut two tires. I like, oh, didn't cut them, but like he was probably quarter tires because yeah. he would drive to, a couple times. He was up front. He would you know landslide to the back. But he was able. He was one of the guys that was able to drive. Like he, he restarted behind us one restart. We were just committed. We're going to run the bottom and just save, save, save. And he drove to about seventh or eighth, and and was it. But er, later in the race, you could see he was just in tire management mode. Like Ty Gibbs was very aggressive all day. Bell was pretty aggressive. Like they they pressured Denny, and Denny's like, all right, go ahead. Like just rolled up one corner, let two of them go, get back to the bottom, and rode. And then ten laps later, he's driving back by them guys because they're hanging off for dear life. So I, I think experience definitely played a huge factor in that. Like, But if for the, to Dale's point, the car made a, a – I think the car was a bigger difference, but you could see the guys that knew I got to make this shit last forever. And and Danny, Danny did the best job. Danny and Martin. Martin was all – Martin was just as good as Danny, I thought. But the two of them – at that, at that in that green flag cycle, we're all like, there's 40 cars out or 34 cars out there hanging on for dear life, and Denny and Martin are just cutting through traffic at, at 50, 60 laps on tires. You were right behind him, I know. I, I was right in front of him, trying to hang on for dear life because I played it really, really safe. Right, I'm like, I'm in great shape, and I like I said, got stuck behind two cars on quarter tires. Next thing, you know, Denny's beating on my back bumper. I'm like, ah, I'm trying to run away, get away from him because I saved my tires. But yeah, it was uh, it was interesting to see how. It, I may oh, never get on. to say this again because oh, it's not 1985. Uh, we're going back Gant's to the holler out there in his 50s winning <clears throat> races. The top three guys are all 40 years old or older. That's what I was getting ready to say. So, fuck yeah, experience mattered. Yeah. I was getting ready to say that. Those three guys up front have driven the cars like what back in the day. Right. I was going to say, you know, Denny 
comes out of late model stocks where tire management is critical and true x is a modified guy where tire management is even more critical yeah. i would say modifieds are beating the tires up worse than any car we we have on the ovals so I, you look at guys that never ran any of that you know any any kind of old school short track stuff and those guys are really but, struggling but to your point of the car mattering josh does the same thing like josh, it didn't matter what josh did it seemed like josh, josh knows how to save tires i mean that's right. late mile stock race car store stuff is that's that most of it is that and and he he tried to, but at, at lap forty it didn't matter. His yeah. was burned up. He was going backwards. I think Josh looking. I talked to Josh last night too. I think he went looking at his lap times and stuff. He went too hard. Well, that and last run trying to get himself back. No, one, yeah, yeah, that one lap sure. down. He was he was he had in a bad spot. Even earlier on when he drove to the lead, it was like, "Ooh, buddy, you're a little. I know. It was a little aggressive here." For I was you, like, but. I was thinking, I was like, man, this guy probably knows as well as anybody how to conserve. Yeah, he must have a really, really good car to be doing what he's doing. Oh, so he's one idiot. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, there we but go. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe he was like having a little too much fun. That was that. It that, looked fun, right well, there. That, that was awesome. That was the thing that I really uh, thought was new and nice was that you had guys that knew better and they couldn't Still help themselves. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, they run them lap times. There was guys. Oh. I, I laughed so hard. Like we would literally the whole second half of the race, we would just put around the bottom and just yeah. wait. And you'd you'd watch a guy blow by you and four of the guys at the top, and they're like thirty eight, fifty one, thirty one, thirty eight, fifty one, fifteen, yeah. thirty four. Yeah. yeah, like they'd go blowing by you on the outside. You're like, all right, see you in a minute. Like yep. ten laps later, here I they know. Go. <laughs> yeah, and I like I was thinking it last night. Like I'm looking there. Like Martin's Martin got into the Cup Series back in when the cars had big motors and did that stuff. And Denny was good. Then he had it too, and then Brad was in it back then. Those guys know. Could you imagine if we had 750 horsepower yesterday? Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving on. Spot on, spot off. There will never be another Bristol race like this one. TJ. I don't think – I don't know if we'll ever see another one like this one because no one saw it coming. It was the element of surprise, and now if we go back, if everyone sees them tires are coming back, we're going to be prepared for it. So you probably won't see another one like this one. Follow-up question, though. How early or how soon can Goodyear tell teams what their tire will look like for the fall race so that teams can prepare ahead of time? Uh, they I hope they don't tell them. Require a test. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to go test. And in the fall, I think Xfinity runs there. So yes. uh, who knows? I, I mean, br Bring the same tire back. Make them figure it out. I, like, this, I, is I what we, this is what yeah. we've been asking for. I agree. I you know how it'll just spit more. It'll just break it up more. Yeah. Should but should Goodyear or should NASCAR prep the track the same way? Yes. Yes. Just leave they it. Do the same. Do the same <laughs> way. I mean, why not? It was awesome. I, I it was fun to watch. I guarantee it was fun on television. Like it probably looked amazing on television. Like it was. It was. It was. We don't. We don't. We haven't had a good short track race with this car in three years. Like this was awesome. Yeah. We haven't had a race at Bristol since they reconfigured it like that. I mean, yeah, I, there, there's a lot of hype. I mean, your dad reckoned Terry Labonte sold the place out. A race like yesterday, they can, they can sell a lot of tickets off that product. Atlanta is going to be a badass race when we go back to it. This race has the potential to do the same thing. I wish they never did that 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 that, that, that press conference in the middle of the race. I know. It was like a panic mode. It's like, and, and Marcus, I, you probably, I talked to him before the race, but like, I guarantee they saw it at lap 50 and they're like, oh, God, this is going to be well, bad. What's going to go one way or another? Yeah, People it, are going to love but it or hate it. Was, it was like there's – literally, when I was walking down those hills to go to the, my car yesterday, every fan that was in front of me was talking about how awesome it was to watch. Exactly. Like, that's what you want. When in the elevator, when you know in the elevator when you go up there, you see them pictures on the wall. Yeah. Look at all them people. Now, they're going to – like you're going to want to go to that race if it's like that. A million percent. Like you're going to want to go to the Coliseum now. Let me tell you, if you weren't there, and I don't know how, did, how good a job TV did covering it, when we had that green flag cycle – it was the most exciting thing. I, it was it was a, a miserable experience to spot, it but it had to be the most exciting thing you've ever seen yeah. in motorsports because there's guys out there literally running four seconds faster than everybody at yep. a at a at a short track at Bristol. Yeah. Here, here's the meeting I hope that is happening is we are off to the best season we've had in years. Ratings are up everywhere we go. Racing is phenomenal everywhere we've been. I know people are going to say Phoenix wasn't. I was on the Phoenix was a good race train. You're an idiot. But I, I, I think you've got to, as a sport, figure out, all right, man, we got, we, got the, we got them in the corner. How do we box this guy to death and capitalize? Because we're freaking riding high right now. Yeah, I think it would be a mistake to 
to to make any changes uh, or be too too aggressive. Jeff Gluck's poll is at eighty eight percent. I think a solid number, um, twenty two thousand four hundred votes. Um, so I mean, I was surprised by that. I thought when they you know came out with the Jeff Gluck poll, it'd be fifty fifty, just judging by reaction yesterday. But um, you know, I think w if you stick around long enough, yes, we'll see another race like that. But I don't think we'll see it anytime soon. I mean, something will change. Whether even if they don't change the tire, the track will be different. Temperatures will be different. Um, it, it that 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 was just an anomaly. I don't yeah. think that's going to be anything we'll continue to see. So if Denny didn't win, that's another probably seven percent. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. Denny doesn't win that race, we're in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> Chase Elliott wins for hundred percent. What if Chase Elliott wins? Just that imagine race. if Dale Junior won that if race. Chase would have won that race. It'd be ninety nine point one percent. Because there's always going to be some who's <laughs> going to vote no just because everybody else won yes. Yeah. But. Uh, Dale, you were really close to Twitter yesterday watching what the feedback was. If Jeff had done a mid race poll, yeah. 50. Do you think it'd be different? I, I, that's what got me thinking the, the poll would be more 50-50 today because everybody in the first 100 to 200 laps was panicking. Goodyear, uh, fans, <laughs> drivers, <laughs> crew chiefs, um, everybody was freaking out because it was going to go one way or the other, and everybody was assuming that it was probably going to go south, and, and, and we were going to have – everybody was already comparing it to 2008 Indy, and, and a lot of people, I think, were hoping to be right. You know, they made their bed. This sucks. This is awful, and I hope it stinks. And you're gonna, you know, you're gonna apologize at the end of this. Um, but it ended up being a great show, and um, you know, the drivers, the teams, everybody adapted. I think you know, you know, Harvick and Clint up there talking about, hey, these teams will adapt. They'll make changes. They'll they'll adjust. Uh, the drivers and, and and the crew chiefs, uh, the spotters, they'll all figure it out and figure out how to get to the end. They did. The wait is over, NASCAR fans. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, is officially live in North Carolina. And right now, new customers get $250 in bonus bets, guaranteed when you bet your first five bucks. Just go to FanDuel.com slash DBC to sign up. Then you can bet on everything from individual race winners to prop bets to which driver is going to take home the championship, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Start your engines with $250 in bonus bets when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash DBC to get started. FanDuel, authorized gaming operator of NASCAR. 21 and up and present in NC. First online real money wager, only $10 deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. All right, well, let's hear what the fans think. Hang on a minute, Casey. What are we having? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the baby. A girl. A fucking yeah. girl. girl. <laughs> <laughs> How was Chad's Poor reaction? Chad. Susan? What, what were we naming? You got a name picked out? Oh, Chad's going to kill me. Okay. Well, wow. yeah. are we allowed yeah, to tell you? Like, I don't want to piss Chad off. Can oh, we cut that out? Or, oh, Chad's no. already pissed. It's Honestly, <laughs> I'm pissed off at him because it's my birthday week and he's going to California. Week. So. Here we go uh, again. My <laughs> birthday, it I is my birthday, birthday week. month. I thought we didn't do week. Oh, I'm I'm older now. Doing, we cut it down to a week. We're doing week because I'm pregnant. It's Chloe's world. We're living in it. And do you still get a baby moon but or whatever you were calling? Chloe's really good at pick uh, cornhole. I've seen. Like she. She's amazing she is, at it. She actually. is oddly. The number of comments that I got asking, like, wow, you brought her to a college she, tailgate she, a little early. She walks up on the board and just drops a thing in the hole. That's great. <laughs> That's a score. Work smarter, not harder. I have a lot to say, and I'm going to try to say it real quick. I'm calling in before the race even is over. This is the best race I've watched in a long time. Now, I know NASCAR fans are the worst, and they're going to give all a bunch of hate, especially a good year. Well, everyone's been asking for this. Give us a softer tire. They've been on dirt here the last few years. Things have changed. Technology's changed. Goodyear, I'm on their side with this. They gave what the fans asked for. Here it is. It's like watching a true gladiator battle. This is a great race. It's like an adrenaline rush of driving on an empty tank with your fuel light on through the desert, hoping you can make it to the next gas station in time that wasn't very quick yeah <laughs> that wasn't quick at all <laughs> but it was a good it was a good point listen i i think 
the person that made the decision to take the dirt off the racetrack mm. is the person we probably need to hug today. Because just imagine if that track had been had dirt, we'd have never got this crazy race. Oh. Are you sure about that? You went tires blowing out on dirt. That'd been amazing. <laughs> It looked like after about lap forty, it looked like we were all on dirt. Honestly, oh, it, I mean, yeah, it was a lot. Actually, no kidding, it really was a lot like that. Definitely, we we're probably going slower. It. Definitely yeah. enjoyed it more than dirt. Oh man, Buffalo dip, Bristol, and beer. Ain't no better way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Gut bomb. My mm. question is, when the hell are we going to get back to the good paint schemes? <clears throat> I don't know who's driving what each week. You guys have to have a hard time with it. There are no good, iconic paint schemes anymore. What the hell, man? The, the problem with that is the it's sponsorship. Just how it's evolved, like, it's man. Just nobody, nobody does a full season. You know, they, like I, back in the day when it was the Good Wrench Three, the Valvoline Six, the Miller Lite Two. Yeah, like that was just that car all week, all year, and that's just that's just not gonna happen. nobody, right? I, I don't know. I think man. all For, of the all of the Penske cars have been pretty. Yeah, consistent. I, was gonna, I was gonna say, I think the Menards paint scheme is phenomenal. The, I think the Monster paint sure. scheme is pretty that's iconic. Not what he's but, saying, but, but he that's not saying, what he's saying. He's he was saying, saying it's not the Menards mm-hmm. Twelve every week. I know. You know but, what I mean? It's the two sometimes. That, that's changed. I yeah. mean, and, and it's still an iconic paint scheme for me. I mean, whether it's on Ty Gibbs's car or Tyler's car, I appreciate the monster paint scheme. But um, he wants that paint scheme to be tied to that driver pretty he wants much. Every like day. a yeah. Jeff Gordon. He, he, don't can, know who, he can piss in one hand and not in the other and tell saying, me which one gets wet. That's I, what he's saying. He wants all, I, he wants that driver I, in that same I, scheme. I, yesterday, I, we got, when we got, or yesterday, or Friday, or Saturday, when we got the track, I looked and the, the cup cars are staged on pit road and Tyler was straight monster this week, which is kind of rare. I feel like you're always usually the beast car mm-hmm. or the nasty yeah. car. And and I was like, th- he was right next to Ty Gibbs, which was like a blue and white car this week. I was week. wondering and if he was going to get in the car. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. This, is not, this looks awkward, you know? I love how old Greg Stucker stuffed up the microphone and said, you want f***ing tire wear? Here's your f***ing tire wear. <laughs> He's right. I love yep. that guy. That's, that's my new favorite yeah. person. Uh, that was good. We had plenty of it. Well, 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 we are back. I'm just going to crack a beer and toast to a phrase that I haven't heard in a long, long time. It's Save like your an old ex-girlfriend calling back when you used to love her. <laughs> Tire wear came into play. If anyone calls in and is about that race, you got to... Uh, Go back and look at a bunch of old classic NASCAR races at Bristol because that is what I like to see. Guys managing tires in a great race at the end. Top five was the only one not a lap down. That's old Bristol, baby. It's Bristol, baby! He's right. Yeah. Yeah. That saying might come back now, Brett. Which one? It's Bristol, baby. Like, Oh, yeah. it left? I, I mean, it, it did. that's the I Twitter was... handle, TJ. It never I left. know, but like now it's like if they say they're coming, they're going to bring this tire back in the fall. I'm gonna. There's probably gonna be a spike. They should announce that literally today. Literally, this the tire ticket sales are gonna go. Yeah. I up. mean, the night race at the Coliseum always sells out, so I'm not really concerned about that. But sells out. Or I don't. I, yeah. <laughs> They're full. I think. Th- I. Th- I feel. I feel like they do very well. They do well. They Somebody educate her over there. The, re- the reality is, when a lot they, of people when, when they reconfigured this track, they took away that bottom groove, the bump and run. They took away all the things that Bristol was was famous for. And this is a chance to get a lot of that synergy back. Whether we like it or not, like there is a ton of momentum around that race yesterday, and they could sell it out. Dude, yeah. I'm telling you right now, if they, they, this is coming out. back, it's going to be a show. The, the tell-all, listen, we all know this. When you get to the racetrack and you look out up on that hill, if that hill's full of campers, those Great. stands are full yep. of people. Yep. Yep. Because there's nowhere to stay in Bristol, Tennessee. Like there's not enough hotels. I've always said the ideal place to have a Super Bowl, if you had accommodations, would be Bristol Motor Speedway because of the way that the stadium is built. But there's not enough capacity, lodging capacity, for people to come and stay there. I mean, it's a really small market. So, um, you know, and it's you, a badass track. It's a badass track. But, man, they got a ton of momentum. And Marcus is a smart dude. And I, I don't have his phone number. But if I did, I'd say, man, sense. I hope you capitalize on this and <laughs> sell the freaking thing out because you can now. The the – the problem with this weekend, when I talked to the, we Brett sent me a picture. You didn't get uh, the caution when you wanted. We yeah, yeah, yeah. But the problem, like, there's not, there was no reason to have a camper there this week. 
That's, we, we yeah, were was, there one well, day. I've been telling y'all that. We're, y'all talk. Y'all get mad at me because I say we need practice. Well, you're but an idiot. What, right? what, when did you leave TJ Majors? Saturday morning. You, like everybody. Saturday morning. Y- y'all left Saturday morning to go to the racetrack. So Truck why would a fan? Saturday morning. Why would a fan drag a camper from Alabama mm-hmm. to Bristol Motor Speedway? Yeah. When cars aren't on track until Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Bristol is a badass enough racetrack where, and I liked the week where we ran an ARCA race on Wednesday or something. Trucks ran. It was like yeah, you run Thursday. Yeah, and there was a night off for the holler parade downtown, and I mean it was always you had a reason to go there and spend four days or possibly five. Can we have late models there? We did that before. We, we've done late models there. Super late models. Dude, they ran a legends race one year. Oh, oh that was not bad. good. Not good. Yeah, we don't. You don't remember that. There was no, such a no, bad wreck Tyler in that was race. Seven when that happened, probably. Yeah, <laughs> so, there was, there was a legend race of late yeah. models, and one yeah, of, which one of them guys wrecked? Larry like Pearson, that? I think it was. Yes. Oh Pearson. my gosh, yeah. wrecked hard. Oh, yeah. okay. And we were All talking right. Andy Houston yesterday. But he that's not that's not the point. My point is, there was a lot going on on the racetrack, yeah. which gave fans a reason to be there. If there's no reason to be there, they're not going to come all weekend. We got to give them a reason. We we used to be the biggest thing going everywhere we went. We got to get back. I got to be honest. When I saw the campground, the campground, it'll tell you what the crowd is going to look like. You know, you just you, said that. But I'm saying <laughs> the crowd was better. The crowd was better than I thought. Hey, Fred, Fred just said that. <laughs> the the crowd was a better crowd than I thought it was for for what the campground. Which looked like. tells me. That the crowd that was there drove in for the day and yeah. drove home. You know why it tells me that? Because I know what hotels cost around there. No, I mean six hundred bucks a night, dude. They ain't paying that. Yeah, not in beautiful Johnson City, Tennessee. No, that is what I'm talking about, bro. That was lit. <laughs> like the light bulb. Party. I was ready to buy tickets for Atlanta, but now I'm. Thinking about buying Bristol tickets in the fall. NASCAR's going to run me bankrupt, bro. That was a great <laughs> show. Is that Man, Raja? what more could you ask for? They it had sounds tire like Raja. strategy, tire fall off, pitch strategy, drivers that manage their tires, drivers that were not as good at managing their tires. And what can I say? The best driver of all, especially at managing tires, won. Yeah, I agree. Freddie, take it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I guess you take your money from it if you're going to spend Atlanta and go to. Bristol, I think Mark's going to be fine with that either way. Yeah, yeah, it don't yeah. matter. I want it one way or the other. Just go to both. Get a credit card. Yeah. If the greatest gives me a big enough raise, I'll pay for your damn Bristol Who's tickets. Vibrate? Not me. Me. Damn, Brad, what do you... That's not a normal... He, it's usually... Red alert. It's usually in his pocket. That's why he has that turned up so high. <laughs> Like a belt sander, dude. Oh, Jesus, man. I didn't know an iPhone could do that. I'm gonna wear, no, no. I'm gonna wear a groove Just on the stop. table here. I can see the wheels turning in Brett's head right now. Thank you to Goodyear Tire. That was a hell of a race. Please don't get discouraged by any morons on Twitter talking about it, issues with the tire wear because I can promise you the variation in lap time, the comers and goers, the fact that there was that much difference in pace. That was a hell of a race. Second, thank you. North Carolina State Legislature, because without you, there never would have been a day in my life that I was cheering for Denny Hamlin. I'm no Hamlin fan, but I'm going to take that $130 to the bank. (laughs) (laughs) Gambling. Yeah. Love it. It's not even the end of the race. Uh, what is it? 53 to go. We just hit 53 to go. This is the best. Host of ours getting ready to slow down. Best. You just, I was going to say, <laughs> seven race match ever we're about to pit, Freddie. <laughs> this is the greatest spectacle I've ever witnessed. Oh my God. They just, oh, they almost freaking hit. Dude, I love this sport right so much. This, so, this, yeah. this is what we've wanted. This is what we've been asking for for the longest. Look at those tires coming off of the 11, dude. <laughs> This is insane. This is good racing, man. Can actually say the drivers drove the wheels off the thing. Quite right, well, almost. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Drove the tires off of it. Drove the tires, drove off, the tires for sure. off the thing. Yeah. I. Yeah. I. I just. If we just, were going back to Lakers, would you look forward to it? Oh yeah. I mean, I, as a driver, I, I've you going back. I've had uh, quite. A f- I've had many uh, miserable days where I do something stupid in the beginning of the race, and I'm out the race for nothing. But that was. I wish I would have been in the mix in that race. I mean, that's the most fun I've I've had. It has it, to be fun, right? in a long time, and I wasn't <clears> even. <throat> the craziest part was I knew earlier we were talking about. You know, we've always talked about arrow with this car, short tracks, and everything. I knew my car was damaged, but I did not know it was quite literally <laughs> destroyed <laughs> yeah. in the front. And I'm up there racing with people, right? And I'm wondering why, like, you know, people are getting frustrated. And then I see my car after the race. I'm like, oh, but it, it was it was like. Killed. Yeah, it was, but it was, I was still was, in the mix. It was, it was like arrow didn't matter. As you much didn't feel it. that hit 
in the front there, down the front stretch. I mean, two oh, you times. felt I mean, it. I did. <laughs> I did. But you didn't I think didn't, like, hey, maybe my car's f-ed up. I don't know. <laughs> they had an ample opportunity <clears throat> not to wreck you in that I'm, wreck. Well, I mean, old, old Bristol, right? You can go down there and you're fine with all the all the debris coming off the tires, all the rubber coming off the tires, and just populating in all the areas we weren't racing. Yeah. I mean, I figured it out later on in the race why that why that happened to me is just anywhere out of the groove, your tires would get your hot tires would get caked up with all that stuff and it would take three or four laps. It was ice. Yeah. 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 Yep. It, it's just there's no grip. But that's another element to it. For sure. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean like there was one time we we got pad we were just creeping the bottom. Like that was our the whole second yeah. half race. We're just not getting off the bottom. And Eric got underneath us Jones and we 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 moved up to let him go. And I said, "There's a two car gap behind him. Get back down." We couldn't. Like, for, like we must have got in the in the marbles. And Bubba's yeah. like, I, "I, he could not get down." Then we got shuffled like seven more yeah. spots back because <clears throat> yeah. we just like. And Bubba's like, "I wasn't even that high." I was like, it, I, "It doesn't matter." Like it's like it was, once you get any kind of marbles on your tires, yeah. it's like ice. You know, it was hard getting into your pit stall, turning left. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, so it was, it was even tricky. affecting you on pit road. We'll keep those reactions coming using our number 704-802-9572. Moving on to Ask DBC. Use hashtag Ask DBC to send us your thoughts on X each and every week. This first one is from Fish Fan. Would you agree strategy by the crew chief was just as important as the drivers having to be patient to not burn up tires? Ready? Tyler, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, uh, our, our plan didn't work out. But, but hey, we learned. Uh, we, we, we showed the rest of the field, hey, this doesn't work. <laughs> but, um, I mean, we already kind of talked about that, right? Like, the strategy was important. Obviously, the 11 and 19 had kind of gotten out far enough to where they could play a little bit safer. Um, for us, I mean, we, we were like the last car to pit during the green flag cycle at the end, and it, it didn't really cost us anything. We could go super hard to the end of the race uh, and get a P30 out of it, which was great. But... To a degree, too, like some of these teams, just depending on where your car was, there was only so much adjustability in it. You could only go so far with the balance. And if you're using up your right front tire too much, there's not a lot you can do other than just run ridiculously slow at the start of the run and hope that your tires don't don't go bad. The downside to that was, like we talked about earlier, if you really took it easy in the beginning of a run, at some point in that first half of the race, someone would spin out, something would happen, right, and all your hard work would would in return give you nothing so yeah. we fought that a few times the first handful of yellows we fought that we would we were riding and right when we thought we were going to take off it's like yep. oh Someone, out. yeah yeah and, and it was it was like i said crazy to see it play out there would be guys just take off and go and you're like oh they're gonna be doomed like the 54 got somewhat back up in the mix just yeah. gone took off the, and then the caution fell the, the there was not a lot of crew chief strategy <clears throat> until that last green flag cycle with whatever it was 50 60 to go because it, you just knew, like, you're going to run 40-ish, yeah. 50 laps. Somebody's going to blow a tire, you're going to pit. Like, before you're going to put Yeah, four their strategy on turned from, from different. Now they're managing lap time. You're managing, you know, what should we run? They're managing in a different way, which is cool. I mean, yeah. that, that's... I was... When I mean, I got, it, like, you could tell some guys... You, you could definitely tell some guys kind of got caught with their pants down at, in that, like... You, I mean, you could run like I think 190 on fuel probably there, and we've never really had to. You like before pre race, we, we, our pre race meeting was, you're running until you got to flip the switch. It stumbles, you flip the switch, you get another lap. You're coming to pit road. That that's how far we're running. All of a sudden, we were like, I don't even know how many laps. Josh, Josh, I think was the first one to pit. It was 40 or probably 50 ish laps they ran. They start coming to pit road. Like and you're now you're in a green flag run 50, lap 50, and it's like, yeah. oh. Sh- when like, that first car hit road, you're like, and oh, it's, it's, boy, it's here probably, it goes. It's probably, I would say you lose three laps, probably up in road, two and a half, three laps. And and that's a that's a tough pill to swallow, Like it, especially when you know yeah. guys are blowing tires. Depends left on and how right. far you're behind the leader. If you're almost going to lap down, you're probably going to be three when you come back out. Yeah. But if you're within a straightaway of the leader, you're probably going to lose it too. Paid, I think yeah, it, paid, like, too. it paid. I think it paid. It paid. And, and that, this is what I'm talking about kind of earlier with the caution sh- that like they've shown us now. They're they're not going to throw a caution during a pit cycle. They're not going to do it. I wouldn't hold them to that. They're, but they're not going to do it. I think if there's a legit, if there's a wrecked car on the track and he stops, really, and, and he's got to get Atlanta. Him. There's a f- car parked sideways right, at the he entrance. He took off right away. Not though. right away. He stopped. He stopped. Uh, on the he race took track. off pretty quick. Uh, there's a stop car on the racetrack. We need to get him back in here and set track straight again. No, he, he didn't send me straight before. So you're starting. The, you're starting the day off with an L. <laughs> Why? What? It, he agreed that it was dangerous. That guy's out there. Ninety-two percent. I tweeted. But he didn't agree that it should have been a yellow. 
I, take I your tweeted my own, I tweeted my own Jeff Gluck poll. 92% of people agree that it's dangerous for a car to be running 35 miles on the interstate. That's not an interstate. Yeah, they're going faster. <laughs> There's no helmets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it, but the, that's the problem. Like, so you're now, you, you, now you got to adjust your pitch strategy based on the fact that, well, f- they're not going to throw a yellow <laughs> during a pit cycle. But you so, could pit too early. We did no, see that, no, too. I, and I, I think the four did that. The four, the four didn't have a choice. They were, like, bleeding really badly. They had a really bad tire problem. So they came too early. But Josh cycled back to third or fourth, I think. Because he just yeah. he hauled ass. He, I he think drove he had the third because we caught. He, he was the next he, car in front. He of was us. third, and and if they catch a caution, we're coming back and put tires on, and it works out for them. He he bled at the end. I think he ended up in the top twelve, maybe twelve to thirteen, yeah, something, something like that. that. 12, 14, but they fell off a cliff at the end. But like, I think some guys got caught. Like, they just couldn't do it. You know, there are some guys yeah. like I know I got a pit, but I, I'm not. I, I'm not willing to put myself three laps down right now. And, and yeah. the guys that were aggressive, it kind of paid. Even off Josh, for though, after the race, I mean, he texts me and he's like. He's like, dude, I entered the race with three flat tires and my car was on fire and it was freaking awesome. You know what I mean? Like every, every driver I talked to absolutely loved it. Yeah, there was a couple that I saw last night come through the FBO deal that weren't real happy with it, but they were ones that had issues. And eh, I mean, if you have a bad day, you have a bad day. But, but he, like Tyler had a bad Let day. Let me tell you who had a bad day yesterday. <laughs> Austin Sendrick had a bad day yesterday. Yeah. And he, he tried to, somehow tried to he, make my day somehow bad, he too. he T-boned you on pit road. Like, coming in last. <laughs> he blows through Stanhouse right in front of the leaders. I don't know what he was doing there. Oh, yeah. He went down like <laughs> yeah. like 66 truck race. Wreck. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. He did not have a good day. Doug poor poor Doug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this next one is from Josh, and I'm going to switch it up a little bit because of what we just talked about. Of the drivers who were not a fan of what happened yesterday, was it because it was unexpected? Would a longer practice have helped? What do you guys think? I, I don't know. No, because I mean, like, we, <laughs> we, I, I think the entire field looked at practice and was like, well, that's just, it was a green racetrack, yeah. you know, not a lot of mm-hmm. laps on the racetrack so far in the, in the weekend. Yeah. Ran and, the day before. And, and, blah, and we're blah, just, blah. we're all looking at, at, the, at the historical stats, right? And, and the trends that this place is, of this place over the last, you know, 10 years. And the top always comes in. The wear always goes away. I think everyone was just, you know, blinded by that, right? Like, we're like, it's, it's going to go back to the Bristol we've always seen. There's no way it doesn't. And, well, <laughs> it, it got us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Longer like, practice doesn't do anything there because you have one set of tires for practice, and by the time you run 50 laps, your car – I mean, we ran 250, tire, 300 tire. laps, and the track never really – Changed from yeah. that regard. So, Tyler yeah, would have been done if he, if we had an hour practice. Tyler would have been done after thirty laps. <laughs> in, yeah, you've been, you're done in ten minutes. Um, could Don't a hide it. soft tire uh, fix Phoenix, or would it be too mm. much of a variable to crown a championship using it? It definitely needs a softer tire, but I don't know. Tyler, what do you think? I mean, I I I can't really. I didn't do a good job of really seeing what the differences were um from my point of view but yeah i mean you, you would fall off and then you would kind of plateau that's kind of been the trend with the, the next gen car so i think i think they tried to bring the tire to phoenix i think it had uh you know more more tread on it um i could be wrong there but i think anything you do to soften the tire up add more rubber to the tire that, that you can burn through increases the heat all that sort of stuff so yeah, obviously we we saw how Bristol played out, and that was an extreme, and it 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 accomplished the goal, right? So I think there's there's a there's a process there, right? Like from my point of view, I've courted many a tires, and the only times you blow a tire is when you, there's not enough air in the tire, or you make an aggressive maneuver that damages the sidewall of the tire. That's when the tire blows. Um, I, every time I've wore a tire out, it goes to the cords, and I, I either wreck it because I can't drive it. Or you know you lose lots and lots of time. So we, we blew one yesterday. Well, that's that's the thing. I, I, I guess people did. But yeah. How did that happen? Right. That's the it, thing. I mean, just wore it. more cars wore their tires down to the tread and just lost lots. But of you didn't back it in blew. though. No, because that's how it used to be back in the oh, day. If dude, you blew yeah. a tire, holy cow! We well, were running 160 well, we were miles also an hour. Run, we were running 20 miles an hour. I was say, you were 160 <laughs> knots. That should have been yeah. a yellow. <laughs> should have been definitely. <laughs> yeah, I think if you have more of a. Bristol style race at Phoenix, you know, it, it seemed pretty obvious. Air didn't matter as much. You're trying to take care of your tires. It would definitely be a more old school, old school race than what we've seen in Phoenix. Which would be great. 
we don't what he's saying though is when it hits that plateau we all run the same speed and wherever you're running at yeah it's just dictated by there you're in exactly and if you're running the same speed you're just looking in the mirror going in turn one okay is the guy gonna run top or bottom oh he's running up i'm gonna move up yeah moving on to what an idiot and we'll kick things off with freddie oh i got i got a good one this week i got two one is andrew curlin is he still here no. I'm sorry, you kidding me? They, all, man, they his, all left when they all left. Yeah, yeah. they all rolled uh, off. Uh, Andrew, was, Andrew and his f***ing frosted tips was oh my right at the top of my what an idiot well, list. And, and it's not only the tips. Oh, you know, God. It's, you it's the attention he sought to get the tips. <laughs> yeah. If I can get 60, 60 likes. If you can't get 60 likes. Dude, li- I can fart and get 60 <laughs> likes. I mean, if you're going to reach for something and actually try to challenge people to, to reach a goal <laughs> in order to do something stupid, which, oh, by the way, he did. Uh, make at least make it hard. So you, you wanted to frost your tips, dude. just go frost your tips. So my my real one idiot though is uh, another friend of mine, um, TJ Majors. You know him. I uh, do. Uh, oh. What do I do now? So I'm listening to the podcast oh, uh, DJD last week, and Damn. Jefferson is on it. Jefferson Hodges, amazing. By the way, amazing episode. 000. Amazing episode. If you want to go back and listen to it, but Jefferson and Dale agreed. That TJ at one point in his life was a mouthy asshole that was very outspoken and wouldn't shut the fuck up. And I'm just trying to figure out where that guy went. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. now yeah. he's got a podcast, the number one podcast in the world, yeah. with millions of listeners. And, he's scared and of that. he won't say a fucking thing on here. Like, <laughs> Are you talking? I didn't hear a thing you said. <laughs> I guarantee you didn't. Yeah, I, just, I don't know what I you're just, talking about. I just said you, you used to be a mouthy asshole. No, no, you won't even run your mouth anymore. It's, I'm disappointed in yeah, you. Yeah, it's gotten a little better when he's at Penske. He's like, oh, yeah. When y'all got I, me in the collar. No, no, good <laughs> lord. <laughs> Jeez, I'm like, dude, I gotta be careful. My, he my just, one an idiot. He'd walk really, right down the middle. My one an idiot is really easy. And Tyler is literally wearing this guy's T-shirt, <laughs> ironically. <laughs> and, and the irony in this is unbelievable. So we're sitting at a Big house last night, and and these two guys that do the what's it called? Black Flag Podcast. Black Flag Podcast. Uh, they roll into Big Al's, and I've met these guys. They're good dudes. But um, Mr. Bobby Timmons <laughs> blows a motor in the middle of Big Al's <laughs> under the table. So Kyle, my favorite bartender, walks over, and he says, real nice, your friend just puked all in my bar. And I'm like, first uh, of all, I didn't bring the guy here. Freddie did. <laughs> but, but fortunately, one of their friends cleaned the whole mess up because I'm telling you, this was it was bad. What's well, Nick's fault? <laughs> Nick brought you. You brought yeah, that yeah, guy. That, yeah, Nick told me to go. Nick. <laughs> yeah. I just I hate it for him. He like, you know, he's in bad shape, right? And then he just goes and plants his feet right in it. Oh, uh. like, <laughs> man. Mm. Yeah. So, but he was he was in a real great fun. mood when but, I left. I said, hey, I, just. Just for you, buddy. I'm wearing your shirt tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he, I, and, yeah you did. Form. But if you're gonna blow a motor, go to the bathroom. I'm yeah. just glad he did it there, not my house, because they yeah, stayed right? at my house on, last night. So I'm glad he, he might have already done it there. Yeah, you don't there's, even probably, know. there's probably a pile yeah. somewhere in my house that I haven't found yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. That's not fun. Can't notice the smell. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I I wasn't noticing much when I left this morning. So. One. Uh, I, I was say worried if you're gonna show up or not. <laughs> We had an instance like that with one of the guys that Jefferson mentioned on the podcast that he worked with, um, former driver. Uh, we were down in Charlotte at a bar. I was sitting next to him, and I look over there. You could tell. You know when it, they're getting oh, close. Yeah. And he just goes. That's gotta, exactly. Leans under the table and. Poor Bob, poor I mean, the, the thing that happened with Bobby, and I, I love that we're going to, because he's going to be mortified about this, but like he was over there talking to me and Brett, and he was seemed fine. No, oh, you know what? He was, was, he was, he was, he was a You know what's really funny? It sounds very familiar to someone else I know that did the same. <laughs> Who, me? Oh, that was yeah. into a garbage can, though. I made it to a garbage can. And that was Barely. your fault. That was your fault. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying. I don't want to say his name, but Mark puked everywhere. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a riveting conversation. Oh, was, Let's, yeah. uh, well, I love it because Bobby's going to be more. But TJ got an uh, idea? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not. I, I'm surprised you're letting Carson no, go. No, have at this. it. Have I at mean, it. I don't know. Carson's got to get one for trying to wreck the field for three laps when you can easily get off the racetrack. Uh, this isn't the truck series. And I, what I tell you earlier, like, if you have a flat tire, you have a problem. You pit like an adult, <laughs> right? <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't throw a tantrum oh, out there man. and try to tee somebody up and, you know, ruin. Um, listen, if I get it next time, well, I, get, I wish you could say it on the radio because if Bubba Blue is tired, I want to be like, spin out. Like, you're going to lose three laps coming down pit road. Spin the f*** out. Like, I mean, that's, that's the problem. Everyone knows that, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Like you can't. Bubba's there because he paid fifty thousand dollars for hitting it. Well, because Bubba's not going to do that. But one idiot, Bubba Wallace. (laughs) Retrospective. (laughs) Yeah, that. I mean, if if someone really wanted to spin out in that cycle, they could have. It was oh so easy to do. And I'll be honest, there's going to be real. I mean. It's gonna be really hard to tell if someone did it on purpose or not. Oh yeah, not very with that. difficult yeah, to tell. Yeah, I sure. thought all the well, you can do it on purpose. You just can't say you did it on purpose. Well, I mean, uh, some, I feel like it, in, in over the course of history, it's somewhat obvious when someone does it on yeah. purpose. Yeah, right? yesterday wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been obvious when your throttle you face goes from like thirty to a hundred real quick, and you, then no, no, you don't even have to do that. Well, yeah, well, I'm saying, but it's it's obvious when you see that. But you could probably do it now. Just no, no. I mean, if, if I mean, I was basically turning right through the corner the last like 15 laps. It felt like I was racing bristle dirt. Yeah, it, like. I don't know. I'm glad the cup drivers yesterday did a. I mean, that was some of the most fun, crazy stuff that I've seen. And those guys, we like Dell Jr. said, they were catching each other, hitting each other in the middle of the corner because they weren't. The closing rates were something they're not used to. Like you guys don't have closing rates like that that often. Yeah. And it was awesome. Tyler, do you have an idiot? Yeah, I'll give it to myself. I <laughs> tried to wreck my teammate. And Jesus. Then how. <laughs> How dare I not get out of Josh Berry's way? I'm I mean, doing, that was really we, rude of me. Why were you holding Josh? Yeah, up? that was not that was uncalled for on my part. So I apologize to <laughs> Bubba's like, what happened? I go, Well, I said he wrecked himself to not wreck you, basically, but Josh was the one that started it. <laughs> I said Josh gave him two big shots in the middle of the corner yeah. and then he just tried to stay off. I mean, and I, spun I missed out. the bottom, but I mean I I had a bad feeling when I was grabbing my tires. I'm like, oh boy, this is gonna be rough. <laughs> and it just hey, it would not go to the I'm bottom. I'm just glad you got a really good restart. That was a good restart though, because like you cleared Josh and let us go. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I mean, I basically just floored it, spinning the tires. Bubba shoved me on by. I'm like, all right, sick. And then, um, yeah, then I they got in Zane's way, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you backed into Zane. I do need to text. He, I, I got to give him credit. Like, you know, I, I in no way thought Zane did anything wrong. Yes. Everyone was kind of no. picking him apart for it. He committed he, it was done. I need to get, get back to him. He texted me right away and apologized. And I, I really appreciate that from him. But. I mean, it's just circumstances there. Moving on to DBC picks. Who won? Freddie, congratulations. Did win? You no. won with your boss man, Denny Hamlin. Wait, can, go, I, uh, can I pick him again? Uh, negative. No, I get first pick, and I was having a beer with a guy last night about, you know, Coda and how I thought it would go and how he thought it would go, and it just so happens that Tyler Reddick <laughs> is pretty f-ing good at Coda, <laughs> and he's my, he's my pick, so I'm going with Tyler. I get to pick first. Mm. I'm glad I didn't tell you I wasn't feeling good about it. God <laughs> damn I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> if I don't have half a second on the field, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> oh, let's see. I think I go next, right? Yeah. Man. The good news is you can't lay up because I went big. Big gun right, right there. That's why you Fine. lay up. Um, I will go. Uh, is AJ running that race? AJ is. I don't think. Is I don't know if they've announced it, but he is running that race. Oh, well, then I'll take AJ when they well, announce it. Breaking news. Well, I mean, I hope they've announced it, but if, if they haven't, it's, <laughs> it's, it's is out. <laughs> surely, surely it's out because I'm sure the Bob Pockers has got that little thingy where they all sign up to run, and it's got his name on the it. But it's not, it doesn't come out until tomorrow. The, the entry list. The entry list. <laughs> <laughs> that old, that NASCAR old, puts together. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh. big, but it's cute. The little thingy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call that? Do hickey? Do funny? Do funny? Do, do, do funny? Do funny? Yeah. Do funny. Who, Tyler, who's up? <laughs> what? We live it. Oh, oh um, yeah. you didn't texture this. I have an idea. Mapes didn't give you one. He did give me one, but I, mm. I'm also losing. So, love you, Mapes, but Tyler. Well, at least tell us who he told you to pick before you pick. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't Chastain? get a chance to. Chastain's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Deal. That's Chastain. Who would you pick? Uh, I went with AJ. I'll take Chase Elliott. Hmm. Oh. Chase Elliott's dude. Yeah. He Tyler, if you're is. behind him on the last corner, move his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Dive bomb coming. Dive bomb his ass. And then when you get out, be like, hey, I'm really yeah, sorry. If it's Russell yeah. Stane, you definitely CBC move his now, ass. If you've ever seen me dive bomb, I'll clear him by like four cars. There ain't going to be no contact. If you, uh, <laughs> if you move Chase Elliott to win, it's going to be great for a little while. Then you're going to get home and you're going to look at social media tight. and you're not going to have a good time. My I, kid's going to be a little torn. Yeah, your kid will be mad. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I hope to God I'm not spotting for you again this race. <laughs> <laughs> last year we oh, wrecked yeah. uh, like lap 10. I had to go spot for like the last corner for Tyler. Yeah. Uh, All right, well. We what, talk- what do we expect to cut it, though, honestly? What so are you with, I think with the newer downforce package, it, it's shown that there are some differences in what the car 
wants and where it wants to be. So obviously you can't just, I, I don't think you're gonna be able to take what you took last year and expect the same performance out of it. There's gonna be some changes that have to happen. So that opens up the opportunity for other teams to hit it, miss it. Um, it, it does seem like this newer car, this newer downforce package isn't as sensitive as, as what we've been racing. So um, I think you'll see similar racing. I don't think people are gonna be running a whole lot tighter. You know, it's a, it's a tricky track to be able to stay within a car length through the S's and other areas. So um, with, uh, I think the biggest thing is they've repaved um, from turn, turn, exit to turn nine through turn 11 is all repaved. That was one of the most wore out places on the track. Okay. Uh, so it's gonna be a lot of grip there. Uh, does that hurt passing there? I don't know. Uh, they repaved the braking zone and turn 12. In the braking zone into 12 through turn 12. So there's going to be more grip there. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> you need grip right? everywhere. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Then, oh, good. Uh, there's that, there's that, like 87 that, corners. That's that that's one corner got, ain't going to help you that much. I, I, think, I think the area that's going <laughs> to affect people the most is you get pretty much three quarters away through the carousel, and it goes from that old asphalt to new asphalt. Um, so I think people are going to be struggling through there, and then you're just going to be hauling through turn 19 again, repaved uh, as we go from repaved asphalt out onto the old bumpy runoff. So it's, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm curious to see how much, I, certainly lap time is going to be faster. Um, don't know how much it's going to change the racing. We'll another, another big question for me is right now it's going to be 78 degrees and windy, no rain. Uh, Shane Van Gisbergen in a cup car at a road course, obviously Chicago, he kicked y'all's ass. What does he do this weekend? What, like, what, What's what he do driving? you, where do you, huh? What's he driving? The, uh, He's driving a collar car. Yeah. What's AJ driving? Another collar car. Oh, okay. If so, AJ doesn't race, I get Shane. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Not really how that works. AJ will be in an open car, uh, so I'm obviously going to qualify. Gotta qualify. Um, but Shane Van Gisbergen, what what do you think he's going to do this weekend? Because he's going to be a big topic going into this I thing. feel like if this was our first time going here, I think he'd have an advantage for sure. Uh, I feel like we've all raced here enough. We kind of know the racetrack, but certainly his expertise in the areas that he that he has will, will show up. I mean, I expect him to be fast, um, but who knows? I mean, it could be a surprise. Uh, the deal, like like at, at Chicago, right? He had he had speed, but the, the the biggest thing that helped him there is he knew where the line was and wouldn't cross it. You know, he he was smart. He was methodical about it. He knew how he could put other drivers in bad spots. Where I made my mistakes, I was just. Push, push, push yeah. until I hit something. Unfortunately, Shane shouldn't have won that race. Somebody else here. Should I really screwed that up. Right but, up but right, hey, right it made for a great story. Right right whatever, it whatever it takes. It's a defense. Can you yeah. not screw up this weekend? <laughs> well, the nice thing about Coda is there's not a wall at every every <laughs> breath of off racetrack, right? So like at Coda, everything's a lot of runoff. Yeah. They don't. I mean, we got track limits through the S's, and that's about it. So it's perfect for me. I, I blow through the corner. Oh, hey, great. We lap. never. We never. Uh, got how many races race have you given away in the last two years? <sighs> Not you specifically, but no, I fuck that. 40, How many races have you given away in the last two years? Oh my gosh! Seriously? You know your team. It doesn't matter. Y'all, you're all together. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Bush and I had a conversation about this. He he told me to stop thinking about it, but uh, it's, that's what I'm trying to get you to do right now. Is realize you got to stop this. Because yeah. you you could have how many more cup wins? It's a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of it's not him. Uh, I, mean, I, there's, I play. There's I play couple, my role. There's a couple that you I play my role. Yeah, Chicago is a big obvious one. Chicago's one. Uh, <laughs> Rich, Richmond. Believe it or not, I never thought I'd have a shot at winning at I, I Richmond. Think, that was another I, one. I, I truly think this is a year, and I ain't saying this because you're sitting here. I told you this last night. I think Tyler Reddick wins three to five races, and he wins championship. I think you're there. If you don't, if you stop f***ing up. If I stop wrecking my teammate and <laughs> holding up the board. <laughs> well, listen, we're glad you came on. I appreciate you. Uh, obviously, we were having a couple cocktails. and not, Nobody's ever had a bad idea when you're having a couple cocktails. No, there's never been a bad idea at Big Al's. No. Ever. No. I was, I, was, <laughs> yeah. I was texting Freddie. I'm like, it is, is it 9 or 9.30? I didn't hear from him for a while. I'm like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. I was dead. <laughs> and then I said 9.30. And then I said, oh, wait. Hey, apparently, oh, wait 9 apparently, we agreed to 9.15. Just yeah. so you know, he was, va he was val like, it's validated. He was concerned. He's like, I, he'd actually text me and said, I'm scared about, I'm worried about Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> I always make it eventually. Well, no, always. actually, one that's, time, that, one that's time, that true. One there, well, this here one in Colombia. Oh, no. Yeah, that's true, too. All right. Well, uh, we'll see everybody in Coda. Casey, congrats. 
Yeah, Thank congrats, you. Casey. I'm, I'm more glad. We got a fan fan in studio. Justin's here. Oh He's yeah, still here. hey, nice to meet you. He, uh, he He's was, the one who cleaned the puke. Yeah, up, I was by gonna say. Yeah, I think Justin, he was. Justin cleaned the puke last night, so thanks for him. We clean up uh, one of our friends' puke. You get to <laughs> join us for the show. <laughs> Come to the show. <laughs> <laughs> what a reward! Yeah. Man. Come on by. Uh, All right. Well, holla, y'all. Monday after Coda, I'm gonna go out on a limb right here, and I'm not one uh, to gloat, but this is the best podcast in NASCAR this week. We had Tyler Reddick, Dale Jr., and obviously the Three Stooges plus Casey. So I hope you guys enjoyed it much as we did. Have a great week. We're out, Holla. You're going to hate Coda. (laughs) Don't put that in. (laughs) That should be the opening. All right. (laughs)